I'm moving on to our next presenter, and that's going to be Chimeric Therapeutics. Chimeric's ASX code is CHM, and they have a market cap of approximately 22 million. Uh, Chimeric is a clinical stage cell therapy company focused on bringing the promise of cell therapy to life for more patients with cancer. Um, presenting from the company today is Chief Executive Officer Jennifer Chow. Jennifer, welcome back and uh, please take it away. Thank you so much, Manny. I very much appreciate the invitation to come back. And thank you, everybody that is online for taking the time today to let me introduce Chimeric to you. Next slide, please. Our disclaimer, and if you can move forward again. Thank you. So Chimeric at Therapeutics, as Manny said, is a clinical stage cell therapy company. For those of you that are not familiar with cell therapy, very simply, it's when we use living cells to be able to impact disease. The cells that we actually work with, we engineer so that we can target patients very specific forms of cancer. And you see highlighted here some of the outcomes that cell therapies have brought to patients in the blood cancer space. Next slide. The cell therapy landscape as we look forward to this year and, and continuing to grow over the course of the next few years, first and foremost is exciting because now we have a curative therapy in oncology. We've also begun to see success outside of blood cancers in solid tumors. In the United States just last week, the first cell therapy for a solid tumor was approved for use. And these cell therapies are actually turning into commercial blockbusters. So in 2023, what we saw is nearly $3 billion in commercial revenue across the small cell therapy market that exists today. And in terms of M&A activity, what was just being talked about, what we've seen is a lot of M&A activity over the course of the last four to six months in the cell therapy space. Alone, there's been $3.2 billion worth of M&A just recently. We expect this to continue. The market is expected to reach about $42 billion by 2027 and have 10 to 25 new products in, in commercialization over the course of the next 24 months. Next slide. So Chimeric Therapeutics focuses very much in cell therapy and in oncology. We believe that we offer investors five very important things. The first is an innovative portfolio. The assets that we're developing are novel using cutting edge technologies. The second is that we've already been able to demonstrate clinical success with those assets, which is very key to both development moving forward towards patients, as well as to value realization. Realization opportunities, we think that we're in a very good place to be able to work with that M&A activity that is starting to uh, come into our space again. And we really believe that the team that we've put together have the experience and expertise to be able to drive these assets through to development. And over the course of the next 12 to 18 months, we have multiple clinical catalysts to take our company forward. So I'm gonna take you through each of these in a little bit more detail. Next slide, please. I'll start with our portfolio. So within our portfolio, we actually have three novel platform technologies. The first of which we call CHM2101. And this is what we call a first in class because we're the first people developing it, CDH17 CAR-T. We're developing this for gastrointestinal cancers. And we were very excited that at the end of last year, we had approval from the FDA in the United States to start our first clinical trial with this asset which we plan to kick off by mid of this year. CHM1101 is our chlortoxin CAR-T, the asset the company was founded in. This is a an asset that's being developed in glioblastoma. And late last year, we were very excited to be able to show positive preliminary data with this asset and have now advanced to a phase 1B clinical trial. And then CHM0201 is what we call our NK cell platform. This is a best-in-class NK cell platform that's already demonstrated positive phase 1A data and has actually advanced to two different phase 1B clinical trials, and we're also using it to develop next-generation technologies. Next slide, please. So when you take a look at, at our three platform technologies, here you see highlighted in our pipeline all of the different activity and studies that are going on. Three platform technologies. 
We have four phase one clinical trials right now with the fifth to open this year. We're covering five different types of cancer that are very difficult to treat. And to date, we've treated over 30 patients across all of our different assets and studies. Next slide. So if I go on to talk a little bit about the clinical efficacy that we've already seen and why that's so important, I'll start with 2101. Although 2101 is not yet in clinic, this is the one that we're going to be taking into clinic this year, 2101 had incredible preclinical efficacy that was highlighted in the Nature Cancer Journal. Across seven different types of cancer, what we actually saw was complete eradication of all tumor cells and absolutely no relapse. So we're incredibly excited to see what this can do for patients in clinic later this year. Next slide. The next asset, 21 or 1101, our chlortoxin CAR T I mentioned, is being studied in glioblastoma. And this is one of the most difficult cancers to treat. Sadly, expectations for survival are under a year for patients when they're diagnosed. We had a preliminary phase 1A trial, which we were able to share data on, and we were very excited to see 55% of patients were able to achieve disease control. And that's compared to about 20 to 40% when you look at the analogs. From a survival perspective, these patients had about 10 months survival, and we've had two patients that have survived beyond 14 months, one who's actually alive and continues to be in follow-up. And again, when we look at the analogs, we're very pleased with what we're seeing. From a safety perspective, this study really was able to demonstrate that the asset was generally well tolerated by all patients, and we saw no major safety signals. So a lot of excitement to be able to continue to move this forward in its development. Next slide. And then our last technology, CHMO201, our NK cell platform, I mentioned also has completed a phase 1A clinical trial and showed positive preliminary results you see highlighted here. Within that trial, we were able to demonstrate safety, persistence, and expansion, very key measures of outcomes for cell therapies. And from an efficacy perspective, we saw about one third of the patients that had solid tumors, colorectal cancer respond, and all of the blood cancer patients respond, with one very notable patient highlighted on the right, a patient who had a complete response and now two years later remains in complete remission. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about value realization and what that formula is to win in the MNA space with the cell therapy. I've worked in big pharma, that's where I actually came from. And so this really comes from the $20 billion plus deals that I've worked on. Number one is that these companies are looking for innovative technologies. So assets that are actually differentiated, something that not everybody is doing. Number two, they're looking for something they don't have. They don't wanna buy something that's already in their pipeline. So something that has a portfolio synergy for them, but it's not duplicative. Number three, nowadays they're looking for de-risked assets. And by that, that means they want to see clinical data. So you need to have early stage clinical data before you can start serious discussions for M&A and with big pharma. And number four, a team that can deliver the, with the experience and expertise needed in some of these very niche development spaces. So let me talk a little bit about how Chimeric sits in terms of the opportunity for value realization. Next slide. From an innovation perspective, what you see on the left are three different types of targeted assets in the cell therapy space. CD19 is the most common, BCMA and Claudin 18.2. And what you see here is these markets are highly saturated. Not only are there multiple assets that are already commercially approved, but you can see there are hundreds of these in development. So there's very little innovation for big pharma. And certainly if you're developing in an asset in this space, to be attractive to big pharma, you have to be better than everything else that sits in the space and everything else they may already have. Highlighted on the right are the two assets that Chimeric is developing. And when I talk about our assets being first in class, this is why it's so important. There's no assets across that have been approved across either of our targets, CDH17 or chlortoxin. 
And there's only two to three of each of these in development. And first in class means Chimeric is leading the development for each of these targets. So certainly providing more appeal to big pharma, novel targets, something new. Next slide. The next piece is really about being synergistic and in offering incremental opportunity. You see highlighted down the left-hand side, the big pharma players that are currently active in the cell therapy space. From a CD19 or BCMA perspective, they all already either have an asset in that space that's been commercialized or is very close to commercialization. So again, not something that they're looking for. If I focus on the right with our assets, the CDH17 and chlortoxin, none of the companies that actually are developing in this space have those assets. Next slide. And then here, what you see finally is just the phase of development. Really important that you're actually got clinical, clinical data to be able to talk to these companies, being in phase 1B to 2, right where our assets are today. Next slide. So I'll just highlight quickly before I wrap up that the experience and expertise we have, small leadership team here with over 75 years of experience, and we've worked on four of the six approved CAR T cell therapies to date. Next slide. We're joined by an incredible group of scientists and clinicians that are our advisory board and come from the top institutions across the United States. Next slide. And finally, in terms of milestones, in 2023, we were very proud to accomplish an incredible list of clinical milestones and are set ourselves up for very ambitious 2024 clinical milestones, already having achieved one of those, uh, starting a first patient in our phase 1B Advent AML trial. Next slide. So with that, I thank you so much for your time and for your attention and for letting me introduce Chimeric to you. We really are focused on bringing that promise of cell therapy to life for more patients with the innovative portfolio, the early clinical promise we've already seen, the near-term catalysts that take us all to value realization opportunities, and a team with the experience to develop these assets. Next slide. If you have any questions, certainly we welcome you to look at any of our social platforms for more information or to contact me directly. Thanks, Manny. Thank you, everybody. Jennifer, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, a couple of questions for you. Now, you talked a little bit about um, how, uh, the current state of, of the market and how a lot of these large pharma players, they're, they're, you know, they want de-risked assets. Um, yeah. And, you know, you sort of, uh, you've talked through your portfolio at the moment. Of that portfolio, what's the closest um, product you have to being de-risked? What sort of time frame is there around that? Um, you know, and as part of that, uh, you know, have there been ongoing discussions with Big Pharma? Have they shown some interest at this point already? Yeah, so a couple questions in there, Nanny, absolutely. So maybe I'll start with the first or the last one. Uh, yes, we've already been entering into discussions with potential Big Pharma um, partners, collaborators, acquisition. There is definitely an interest in a number of different things that we are doing and across actually each of our platform technologies. In terms of the most advanced, so CHM1101, which we were able to provide the phase one clinical data on, and it's actually already in a phase one B trial. Phase one B trial really starting to be the sweet spot for where you know we're having those MA discussions. That's probably the most advanced of our programs. But not far behind is our NK cell programs, where we again moved out of phase one into two phase B clinical trials. So really starting to be able to, to leverage that clinical data now. Okay, great. Um, and just a quick question. I mean, just coming back to CHM um, uh, 2101. Um, yeah. uh, how... Actually, I should say CHM one one hundred one, the one B clinical trial. Um, you've uh, you've got one patient dosed, correct? Is it is it is it tough? Has it been tough to to find patients for the trial? It's it's not that tough to find patients for the trial, Manny. I mean, GBM or glioblastoma is a relatively rare disease. 
but sadly, unfortunately, there are not a lot of good therapeutic options for patients. So it really isn't that tough to to um, actually find patients. We just don't announce every patient that gets enrolled. Generally with clinical trials, we'll announce when the first patient is dosed, and then we'll give an update after a small cohort of patients have actually been dosed. Okay, and just to wrap it up, um, from a financial, from a, from a balance sheet perspective, you look like you've uh, got a substantial amount of cash there on the balance sheet. So is it fair to say you're, you're, you're comfortable in terms of funding, um, you know, certainly for the foreseeable future? We are. We're comfortable in funding for the foreseeable future to our next clinical set of catalysts, Manny. We've been very fortunate and, and had some good support in our entitlement offer and are sitting on about $15 million cash reserve. Jennifer, thank you uh, for your time today. That was great. and. Um... Have a great weekend. We hope to see you back soon. Thank you so much, Manny. It was great to see you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.